back guys and uh, just having some lamb and rice Genghis Khan as they call it in Japan so top two get a $600 seat bottom left and these tournaments are really good you really want to be playing a lot of these saddies and these are these are happening at the moment because uh, they got raised here because this guy has been pretty tight well he's been moderately tight um, yeah he should be jamming on us a bit here but he decides to call It's a pretty annoying spot now, but I think I'm going to bet. I think he would have jammed. Um, like a big king and an ace. So a lot of the time here, I think he's got 10 jack, 9 10, queen 9 suited, stuff like that. He may even have jammed some of those pre, so. The other thing is too, I think players in that spot sometimes, I think they get a bit overly sensitive about the bubble. If he busts, I mean, he still has to, I mean yes, he has a player shorter than him, but he has to come in first or second, he can't come in third, so, you know, he still needs to be looking to get some chips well which she obviously was jamming the old king two there <laughs> so now the bubble factor is really high super duper high so we can look to use that you have to keep in mind though that these players might not be quite aware of the ICM and what I mean by that is they might call you a little bit loose, which hurts their own, but also our ICM if that happens. I mean, if I had to just shove there, <clears throat> like here, I mean, you could actually just shove this hand. I'm not going to. Because I think that although shoving is fine, I think that just raising and then taking it from there is, at this stack depth, is also okay. Um, but from an ICM point of view, we could, you know, we could just shove into this guy. Probably not quite ready to fold because of the presence of the backdoor clubs as well here. And at this point now, I think. What can he have here? Just thinking if I should shove here. Is he going to donk out with the king? I think I will shove here. I mean, even if he's got king 10. Or King Queen, King Jack. Uh, he probably calls with those, but I mean, he might have like a seven, seven, eight. Uh, he might have nine, ten. He might have some hands that you know he was then planning on check calling at that point that he now has to fold because we just shoved. Uh, and even if he has King Jack, even if he happens to have that hand, uh, we still have what nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We still have almost thirty percent equity. I think I'll fold that one just because it's a little bit of a fishier table. Oh. I think I'm just going to shove here. <clears throat> it's a big shove, but the ICM pressure is obviously key. 
intense suit is kind of marginal, but but uh, the stack and tile. No, it's not stack and tile. It's triple eight focus, stealing focus. <clears throat> yeah. So those pots that we just picked up, I mean, they were really key for us. I mean, just because of the, you know, you can see we're up to thirty eight thousand now. We've created this little buffer for ourselves <clears throat> from the other two guys. So if we can just chip away at them now. That, uh, you know, top middle table I followed the A6 suited before. And you heard me make a comment. The thing about that is, if it's a, a table of, you know, pretty good players like Regs and you open early, normally they're kind of like, oh, early position, you know, decent hand. <clears throat> They've got King-10, they fold or whatever. King Jack, they fold, they've got Ace 10 off, they fold against an early position raise a lot of the time. You know, sometimes they 3 battle, whatever, but the problem with playing against players that are of lesser caliber is they just don't fold. And so you want to be a little bit careful raising with those raggy aces against a fishy table because the idea of exploiting fish is exploiting their tendency to call down too light and play inferior hands. So you just got to keep that in mind, you know, if you're deep, uh, especially with the SPR, it can get very awkward very quickly <clears throat> uh, when you're deep in a tournament like we are now and the blinds and anties are quite huge, the average M's getting, getting down a bit. <clears throat> uh, 9, 10, 11, yeah, so I think I'm just going to raise to that amount. Wow, this bottom left one is kind of interesting where we could actually just shove. It would be, but it's, I think it's just a little bit too big a shove. But at the same time, I think I will call in position with the deuces here. It would just be a little bit of a gross shove, but his calling range is just so small. I mean, you shouldn't even be calling with hands like tens. Probably even jacks, you can't call. Probably queens up. Actually, that might be a bit tight, but I mean, the two big stacks going at it. This is when the bubble factor. This is when the bubble is the biggest, right? This is a really hard spot here. I'm gonna fold it. This guy hadn't been that loose. Uh, will I shop here? Yeah, I think well. This guy here hadn't been that loose. <clears throat> Made it a bit easier for us. Uh, I think I'm just going to stab now. Well, am I going to stab? Free one. Maybe take free one. It's a chance you check raises. Pretty low. Maybe I will check actually. I'm just trying to find some way that it's possible that he hasn't connected with this board, you know? I'm just trying to find a way, like... Queen 10, Jack Queen... Are those hands going to bet? It really depends on how passive he is. Ace 2... I think I'm going to bet here just... I don't know if he's going to call with Ace High, you know? Oh, maybe he does. <laughs> so sick. He got a small pair or something. Is he cold with a small pair? Maybe he does as well. Ah, he's just gonna go out. Oh my god, he just got his queen. I think he's gonna call if we bet river there. I was trying really hard to like try and find a hand that he can that doesn't connect with that board. It wasn't easy. It just uh, yeah, just just one of those boards. Everything just seems to have some sort of equity in some way. So the small sort stack seems to be playing a bit tight, uh, I think. And have, as I said, that he raises.
I think I will just check now. Um, hopefully, this guy's snuck in with, uh, you know, bottom left sequins is snuck in here with the old uh, six nine suits or something. No, oh well. Uh, yeah, so this top left one. <clears throat> I think we can actually fold. Uh, it's really messy, messy, messy stuff, but I, I don't actually mind playing it that way. Um, yeah, if you do the maths on it, it's actually... Yeah, I mean, it's actually not too bad, depending on the opponent's range and stuff. I mean, I don't think we could have the best hand very often there, but... Uh, uh, well, I mean, I guess it's uh, impossible. And if we think we can, then we probably should just be getting it in pre or on the flop, just jamming. Um, Uh, yeah, it's messy because we're so short, but we're getting huge pot odds. We need to get chips, uh, and there's not really that many negative implied odds, you know, in, in play because, uh, yeah, you know, we're short. You know, it's not like we're deep. We're going to be spewing tons of chips if we hit a second best hand. Uh, the pot odds dictate the best line of play, <clears throat> and in that instance, we're getting big pot odds with a decent hand and. Uh, the question was, I think, um, was on the flop, you know, how do we want to proceed? Do we want to just jam it in? Do we want to check call? Um, I think it's pretty close, uh, because even if he's got like ace jack, you know, we're almost getting the right price, I think, with six outs, 24%, but then a bit less because he can redraw on us. So maybe we're, uh, I guess I'm just going to jam on him. I'm going to jam on him. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty close. <clears throat> And uh, it might have been, uh, it could have been a mistake, uh, but I don't think, but I could, I don't think it would have been a big mistake, but then I'm not sure about that either, it actually could be. But at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, at that stack depth, I mean, when I say big mistake, uh, well, I really mean little mistake. <laughs> so there we are, we got the four. It's nice when that happens. Fifteen. So we can probably just call now because we're getting. Uh, well, we only need like thirty percent equity, and I think King Ten has it against a M four UTG jam. Um, yeah, so we just get in now. Yeah, the Queen Ten. Uh, yeah, I mean I. Actually, probably should have got in pre, I guess. I think that the line that I took is better when you have something that's a bit lower down, like 10-7 and stuff, something like that, jack-8 suited, 4-5 uh, suited, maybe something like that. Um, I think I tried to get a bit cute. But hey, we've got chips. Uh, jack-8, I've been jamming on this guy a bit. I think I'm actually going to fold now. Uh, we do have the, the, the big stack. The biggest stack here. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of, uh, these guys seem a little bit tight, which is good. gonna shove here. Where am I gonna shove? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna shove it. Well, yeah, I think I'm just gonna shove it. I could have 9, 10, King 10 and stuff like that and be doing that. And we are drawing dead. Yeah, not too really too much I think we can do there. With that particular stack depth that we had. You know what? I'm just gonna shove it. It looks crazy strong if we uh 
It looks crazy strong if we actually threw that, I think. It probably even looks weaker if we just jam. You know I mean, because these guys are so short, we're obviously committing to them. I mean, if we threw that, we're putting half this guy's stack in. And obviously committing to him. You know, I think that if we three bat, he's going to be like, mm, okay, three bat. He knows he's committed to them. Uh, he probably has, you know, ace eight suited or ace ten up or some pair or you know, king queen maybe king jack suited, uh, but not a bluffy range. Uh, and at the same time, if we just jam, I mean, it's, the range hasn't really changed much, has it? I mean, we could still have pocket deuces and we do that. So. Uh, in fact, it probably looks more like that, doesn't it? It looks like more like we have a, a small pair. Uh, so I, I think it's okay. Might get some hero call with like H9. We made it. Well, that's right. There's still like uh, sixty-three dollars in value. Sixty-three dollars, I think, left to play for. You know, the funny thing about triple eight poker, right? <laughs> you know, the funny thing about triple eight poker is you actually can't unregister. You actually cannot unregister uh, if you win a satellite. And it's only $60 different. We get 540. First is 600. Just on the odd chance that you happen to decide you don't want to play that tournament anymore, or you actually want cash, or, you know, just not sure if you're going to be able to play it. They, you're actually almost, <laughs> you might just want to talk off your chat, chips and just take the cash, you know. I really think it's a mistake that, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, look, it's not too bad from the point that, um, probably gets more, like, fishier players, not regs playing the satellites. You know, I'm just thinking what we probably could do? And I haven't played that many tourneys on um, Triple Eight, but wow, <laughs> how does the king come out there? That is so gross. <clears throat> I think he has diamonds here a lot, or just nothing. And so I'm just going to check, obviously, and he might bluff the river a bit. I don't think there's any point even betting the river. I mean. If he's got like ace two of diamonds, he might hero, but he shouldn't really have fours and fives and that sort of thing. I mean, he probably would have three bet them pre. He's probably just going to show us like queen nine, I guess, or maybe like six seven of diamonds or something. Yeah, queen ten. So yeah, I think it might even be better for him just to check call for. <clears throat> Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so what we could do is we could actually maybe buy into the uh, destination tournament with cash. Win satellites. I presume if we win a satellite, we get like cash, right? Maybe they give you some sort of tickets or something. I don't know. I presume. I mean, they'll give you tournament cash, but not cash, cash, but. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> it's an interesting hand.
I think this is a really close hand. The reason why I'm, I'm min raised is because I, I thought sometimes if we take like a line where we look really nutted, like we have ace eight or something like that. <clears throat> I thought we might be able to get him off uh, a queen or maybe even if he's got like ace deuce, you know, and we play a, like a really crazy strong line. I thought maybe we can get him off of it. So now we're at the river. The question is, does he bet? Uh, does he call with um, a small ace? Yeah, I mean, it's probably close. I think we can fold. If he's bet the flop with like queen 10, I think he folds it. And the other thing is too is that uh, he might sometimes have diamonds himself. And so we actually kind of get value in that sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a pretty interesting spot, I think, because, you know, we actually have some showdown with our hand as well. So turning it into a bluff and turning it into a semi bluff is kind of really, really gray because, you know, the eight on the flop could actually be the best hand. And by check calling, we might get him to barrel. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if we don't hit two pair or, you know, trips or a flush on the turn, it is kind of getting hard to call down barrels, you know, against barrels. So, um, I don't mind playing it the way we played it because I do think there's some better hands that we can fold out. <laughs> And I think even if he had Ace Deuce there, he's in a pretty tough spot on the river. The way we set up the S pair of one, I mean, he's got to hope we're bluffing because he doesn't beat anything the values. And on that board, in the line we took, there's not really that many bluffs that are going to play like that. I mean, do we just have a couple of tiny diamonds? Do we have like... I mean, even if we had like a couple of Broadway diamonds, you know, that, that could have got there as well. So, I don't know whether it's great. It was, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of possibilities. Pretty close. <clears throat> I haven't seen three betting much yet. Uh, we do have kind of a decent hand, but at the same time, a little bit of a dangerous hand. Could be dominated some of the time. Very nutty hand, bottom right. And bottom middle, quite nutty as well. Pretty tricky spot here, because um, I think, well, we can't fold now, I guess, but can we? I think a lot of his flatting range actually contains an ace, like an ace x suited sort of thing. But I think, um, I think that enough of the time here, like he's just got some donk hand, like king ten with a king of diamonds, or jack queen with a diamond, or something like that. 
we're getting a really big price. Um, I kind of feel like he's got an ace, but I mean, we're just getting, how good do we have to be? We only have to be good like 20% or something. So you can have like a, a um, well, I'm surprised I didn't get that in free. I think a fishy player there will bluff, you know. So it's a little bit of a dangerous turn card, because uh, seven nine, uh, six eight, ace nine. Some hands that we're beating now beat us, but it could have hearts, I guess, as well. Not impossible, but we're not really folding. You can have eight nine, I guess, as well. <clears throat> It could even have just floated flop with king high, you know, like king 10. Just think we're just betting. Not impossible with like a king of hearts back up. So this is probably about the best card we could have got, I think. Don't know if he's... I guess 6, 7 and 7, 8 will probably call turn. A once in a while, you know, he might have trapped, I guess, but... Yeah, if he has, it's just bad luck. But we've set up the SPR, so it's it's right on one. You know, he's got 21k, and there's 21k in there, and that was my plan there. So, I mean, we're obviously never checking, but I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, when we do bet the river, though, it does look a little bit value-ish, because uh, if we're betting to fold out like a missed flush, you know, well, we, I mean, we don't really need to shove. I don't really know too much about this opponent yet. I mean, we know a bit, but <clears throat> in terms of heads-up strategy, uh, I've just been using sort of a default uh, of just raising the uh, the min, and it seems to be working pretty well. This is a really good time when it's good to have like a dedicated like heads-up hard, you know, and see how your play opponent will play heads-up. Um, I mean. You're normally not going to get enough hands for it to make a huge difference because you're going to be basing your decisions on. Um, am I going to? I think I'm just going to raise call off here rather than just shove because he might keep in like some 10 jacks, king nine suited and stuff. If he's got like ace five, he was probably going to call a jam anyway. And that's exactly what he does do is jam with the weaker king and we win. So that worked out. Uh, yeah, so I mean, these satellites are really good. Uh, these guys, I mean, they weren't donks. You know, even that jam, I don't mind that jam there. You know, it's not a big donk jam or anything. I think it was okay. Uh, so let me just get a bit organized here, guys. Yeah, so that's good. We're in the uh, so 600 buy-in Excel series. So let's just find this. Here it is down here. I wonder what it says if we click unregister. Are you sure you want to unregister? Yes. You won this seat through a satellite tournament. You are not permitted to unregister. So if we had have just bought in with that, in the, into that with cash, and then won the ticket, that's what I'm curious about. You know, I, I'm pretty sure it would just have to give you some sort of tournament dollars, I guess, right? We might check on the net later about that. But that that's probably a better option because... You want a bit more flexibility. Um, and well, if you're trying to build a bankroll, I mean, sure, the $600 tournament's fantastic, and I'm going to play it regardless. One million guaranteed. Um, they'll be running satellites all day and night for it. There'll be tons of satellite winners and fish in there, and it'll be great. But uh, at the same time, you know, you just want the cash. Kish. So uh, what I'll do now is I will... Uh, just clean up these tables a bit for the viewing for the uh, visual pleasure of the audience viewing pleasure yeah that's a bit annoying that jack's hand before actually wasn't it I mean we yeah it was just a bit annoying
I'm not really sure where I'm going with this. this <laughs> I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Like, <coughs> I'm moving tables, but my brain's not really thinking about what I'm doing. Sorry, guys. There you go. <laughs> so it's like moving them around back and forth. Zone in, please. Get in the zone and win a flip. One time. Where's the jack? Bang. Damn. We didn't cash, right? Uh, we did cash. 35 Dolaros. And that's... You know, I should have been a bit more perceptive of the bubble, obviously. Uh, I was having too much fun in that satellite. <clears throat> so we're down to three. Uh, and, you know, we haven't really had any opportunities, despite me being overjoyed by this table we're on. I mean, the stack size that we have and the hand distribution that we've had haven't really allowed for us to do anything uh, too fabulous. So we're sort of just sitting a bit short here. Um, and it's kind of annoying. Pretty good spot here. We've got the aces with a low. It's very important that we have the low as well. You know, the eight. I mean, I would... Yeah, I would probably... Well, yeah, I'd probably call anyway with aces. But... Well... Yeah, I guess so. Maybe not bad aces. Ace, ace... Jack nine, no suits would be pretty uh, marginal. I might fold that sort of hand. And that's why. Because aces just don't win. <laughs> 